Today on Grow With Science, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about soil pH. So just to start with the basics, the acidity or the alkalinity of a substance is measured in pH units. And this scale goes from 0 to 14. Right in the middle of this scale, we've got pH 7, which is what we call neutral. Uh, and this is where you'd find things like water. As the numbers decrease from 7, the acidity gets higher, so a low number means that something is more acidic. As the numbers increase from 7, so does the alkalinity, so a higher number means something is more alkaline. Soils generally range from an extremely acidic pH of 3, right up to a very alkaline pH of 10, and everything in between. Most cultivated plants that you're likely to come across tend to like a pH of around 6.5, which is just below neutral and slightly on the acidic side. But soil pH is really, really important when it comes to growing plants, and it can mean the difference between a plant thriving and a plant dying. And while soil might just look like soil, the actual pH of the soil can lock away or even unlock different nutrients in the soil, and that's what can make a big difference when you're trying to grow different types of plants. So now that we've got those basics out of the way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test some soil. I'm going to show you how to do it with a basic tester. And then once we've done that, I'll show you how to interpret those results so that you can get the very best conditions for your soil and you can treat it depending on which ones you've got yourself. And then you can get the best conditions for growing your plants. So all you need is some kind of cup or a clean measuring jug and you're going to need a pH meter of some description. Now these comes in all shapes and sizes so you can get them in like little paper strips that change colour depending on the pH. Get ones with electrodes that you stick in the soil. Um, you can get ones that are a solution that you squirt into the, uh, into the water that you've got and that changes colour depending on the pH. Or you can get ones like this uh, which is a little plastic digital one that was like on Amazon. They're about a tenner. Uh, if you just have a look at pH meters, they uh, come in this handy little plastic box and they usually come with a buffer solution which is like little powders, sachet things. Uh, you mix them with water and then you can calibrate the pH reader uh, and make sure that it's giving you the res right results. So you want to do that every now and then uh, just to make sure that it's reading right. So we're going to use this one today and I'm going to show you how to use it and measure the pH of your soil. So the first step is to give your uh, measuring jug a rinse out and you can either put some water in and throw it away like a normal person or you can just knock it over like I do uh, and then what you want to do is get around a tablespoon of soil uh, and just stick that straight in your jar so I'm just going to do that now uh, I'm going to pick a spot and get that soil and I'll bring it back so there's that and that is some uh, soil from my pumpkin patch which has had compost on it uh, and various different plant foods so I'm hoping that this is going to maybe show up a bit on the acidic side uh, I suppose there's only one way to find out so all you've got to do now is add some water to this um, you don't need loads uh, just enough to um, turn it into water you don't want mud you want actual water solutions so just enough to make it so that your soil's uh, swooshing around inside now the next thing you need is some water and normal tap water and rain water won't do so what you need to get is some deionized or distilled water um, sometimes you can get this for like sticking in your iron so that it doesn't get lime scale um, and this is basically had the hydrogen ions removed and it's uh, that's what you're measuring with pH so you want to get some of that deionized water just so that it doesn't change your results uh, and make you think that you've got like a higher pH than uh, you've actually got you like say if you've got soft tap water you'd get more alkaline results so uh, all I'm going to do is add that into there so that it's um, you know so that it's all floating around inside uh, you don't want it to just be like mud because that's not going to do you any good so you're just going to put it in I'll show you now and uh, stick some in there that should do it just so that you've got like watery soil I suppose and you want to give that a good swooshing round just to give it a good mix. So all I'm going to do now is get my pH meter, comes like this, take the lid off the end, like a highlighter, and then you'll see like the measuring bulb just on the end there, and that's the bit that you're going to be sticking into your water, so let's turn it on. See what it comes up with. Oh, it's just going to say zero till we put something in it. So stick that in there, give it a stir around, and then just leave it. There we go. So as you can see now it's come up to around 6.5 and that's just going to probably steadily just go down a little bit and you want to just leave it there just until it stops really or until it gets really slow. 
so there we are we're starting to slow down now and we're around 6.1 um, pH so that's ideal for growing pumpkins I'd say maybe could be slightly higher but not a great deal um, I'm quite happy with that so I don't really need to treat it with anything so all we need to do now is take it out rinse off the end make sure you give it a good wash you know just to get all that soil and stuff just off the uh, off the bulb and everything so just to try it again this time I've got some compost um, which is uh, provided by the council here so uh, they come and dump like 70 tonnes of it every uh, spring so I've still got some of this left um, and what I'm going to do is just do the same again I'm going to get the water pour a bit in there we go give it a mix pH meter turn it on all zeros stick it in So there we go, 6.88 straight to it and that is right just under neutral so what I'll probably do is actually I'll stick a bit of this compost now that I know the pH of it is neutral, get it on my pumpkins and that's going to raise my pH up to around 6.5 um, once, um, once the water rushes through it and it sort of drains into the soil. So what you want to do is when you're doing this do a couple of tests in different places maybe like five and then take an average um, an average ph and then you just know that you're not getting a, like an anomaly if you've got like a specifically acidic part in your soil you want to make sure that you test a couple of different places just so that you get the right result so what i'm going to do now is take it out give it a wash make sure it's dry stick it in the box and it's as easy as that we're done so first of all we're going to start off with a ph range of three to five and that's very acidic soil so one of the big features of really acidic soil is that most plant nutrients, including calcium, potassium, magnesium and copper, are more soluble, which means that they can be more easily washed away and they're not as available for plants to absorb because they go right through down into the soil. Most phosphates are also locked away because they're unavailable below a pH of 5.1 and a lot of bacteria that breaks down organic matter, which uh, a lot, obviously a lot of your nutrients come from, are also unable to work below a pH of 4.7. So below that you're really, really getting into acidic soil and it's going to be really low nutrients. So you tend to only get specialised plants that really thrive in these conditions growing in acidic soils. Now if your results show that you've got extremely acidic soil, you can treat this by adding lime or gardener's lime and you get this in most garden centres, it comes in boxes or buckets and you just treat it as the instructions say and keep testing it with your pH tester as you go along until you reach let's say 6.5 which as we said earlier is ideal for most cultivars of plants. So next we've got strongly acidic soil which is 5.1 up to 6. Now strongly acidic soil is ideal for ericaceous plants which is another word for plants that don't like lime and this is going to be plants like rhododendrons, camellias and heathers and again if this isn't the kind of plants that you're growing and your plants that you want to grow aren't ericaceous just add lime again keep treating as you go along and this will raise your pH up to sort of around a 6.5 and then this is what we've got up next so that's 6.1 up to pH 7 which is slightly acidic to neutral a pH of 6.5 is the best general purpose pH for gardens with a wide range of plants growing except for the lime hating plants where this pH is too high. The availability of the major nutrients is at its highest and bacterial and earthworm activity is at an optimum level. This is where the availability of your major nutrients is at its highest and bacterial and earthworm activity is also at an optimum level so that means that the bacteria and the worms are going to be breaking down all of that organic matter which is going to be bringing in more and more nutrients to your plant roots. So when you do your test, if this is the result that comes up, you're onto an absolute winner because this is the perfect pH for growing most types of plants. Keep doing what you're doing and keep testing periodically just to make sure that it stays the same and you can treat it either way accordingly. So next up, we've got pH 7.1 up to 8, which is your alkaline soil. Once you get up to these pH levels, phosphorus availability starts to decrease. Iron and manganese becomes less available, leading to lime-induced chlorosis. An advantage of having soil at this pH level is that club root disease from the cabbage family, so brassicas like broccoli, sprouts, kale, anything like that, is greatly reduced. So if you do your tests and your results come back that you've got a really alkaline soil and you want to reduce it to get to neutral or a bit more acidic, then you can use acidifying agents such as sulfur or iron sulfate. But I mean, you've really got to check the instructions with these so that you don't go too far and you don't end up killing everything in your garden. And you generally find that soils that are heavy with free chalk or lime, 
can't tend to treat just as well so you really got to make do with what you've got in those cases. So one thing I will say is if you're going to try any of these methods to increase or reduce the pH of your soil using lime or any other products then you really do want to make sure that you follow the instructions on the box and it's best to do it when you don't have things actively growing in the soil so you can really get into there and you can rake it in and make sure that you're testing it along the way so that you don't kill any plants uh, and you don't get any further problems harder down the line that are harder to fix. So just make sure you follow the instructions and you won't have any problems at all. So that's it for today. Hopefully now you've got everything you need to know about soil pH and you can go out, test your own soil and make sure that your plants have got the very best conditions to grow in. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel Grow With Science so that you can check out my other videos and get a new video every week. And if you want to support my channel, don't forget to check out the Seed Club on Patreon. The link's below in the description and you can join me in growing some amazing seeds that I'll send out to you every month of the year along with exclusive videos and some other benefits. So check that out and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,